fellow techies. Really glad that you're here today. Let's talk about the Google Cloud Developer Certification. Now, this is a professional level certification. I've gotten actually an interesting amount of questions in the last uh, few months, so I figured I'd finally get around to doing a video on it and answer some questions. I do have in the description below basically um, a top 10 uh, list of things to know for the exam. I'm going to talk about the top 10 here briefly. And then if you're interested in learning more about the developer exam, there is a full course available that I have put together. It's on techcommanders.com. Uh, and uh, again, if that's of interest, along with uh, eBooks of practice questions and other things of that nature to help prepare you for the exam. Now let's talk about the top 10 things. So again, in the video description is the link to the blog post. So the first thing that we want to know is BigQuery. Okay, BigQuery is big on this exam. Now, what I mean by big, it's tested heavily. Now, we'll need to know, for example, about the API. We'll also want to know what the use case is for Big BigQuery, of course, how to import uh, and export out of BigQuery. Now, there's going to be some command lines, so we'll need to know, for example, the CLI with gcloud for BigQuery. A um, couple of things too, what can we do to reduce latency? And then also too, a couple of things, how do we validate a query? Um, so that's, you know, again, fairly heavily tested overall. Now, we also need to control access to BigQuery, and this is still uh, basically under the BigQuery area for preparing. We know what a data set is, so that's basically a collection of tables. Um, and also too, um, how to set up ACLs for BigQuery and BigQuery connected services. All right, the number two thing is how do we control access basically to BigQuery? So again, one and two are sort of uh, overlapping to a degree, but this one here sort of really focuses mainly on the security part. Uh, also too, we wanna be aware with BigQuery that um, it is a, a SQL based data service and it is a low latency data warehouse, um, at least compared to others. So uh, now when it comes to comparing um, big table to BigQuery, that's a point of confusion on the exam. Uh, so basically uh, big table uh, is basically a low latency data service, um, but it's not a data warehouse. So we need to not confuse that, of course. Uh, number three, uh, Kubernetes engine. So this came up quite a bit. So we need to know kubectl and the gcloud commands. How do we bring up a cluster? How do we expand the cluster? We need to know also too some of the other areas for securing Kubernetes. For example, um, that's going to be focused mainly on binary authorization. So make sure we got that down. Um, another quick note too, I want to point out too with um, GKE Kubernetes engine, of course, was what happens when we get an error code of 400 or 403? We we'll want to, of course, uh, know that. I've got an explanation of that in the course and also in the post as well. Now, Cloud SQL and uh, Cloud Spanner, we need to know the difference. So this is number four. So with Cloud SQL, a couple of things to point out. There's some roles we want to know about. We also want to know how do we connect, for example, to Cloud SQL with the CLI. How do we connect App Engine to Cloud SQL? A couple other things, too, um, that came up was uh, when it comes to the SQL editor, I'm going to just leave it there for you to look into. I do have a link um, for information on that. So what can the SQL editor do? and how is it different um, from basically an admin. Now, number five, this is basically uh, data services. So we know we need to know uh, Cloud PubSub, uh, data flow, cloud endpoints, for example. Uh, another thing too that came up was Apigee. So we'll need to know um, basically um, what, what is the use case for cloud endpoints and then Apigee, right? Number six, Cloud Spanner was tested heavily as well. We'll need to know with Cloud Spanner, um, basically connection costs, 
how to deploy and how to scale, what are the different deployment schemas with Cloud, uh, Cloud Spanner. Also, to uh, the different types of nodes that are available. Okay, number seven, permission basics, uh, IAM basics, basically, mainly security, um, audit logs. Also, to another thing that uh, sort of is security focused was we'll need to understand how to handle secrets. Secrets is a big area um, that we'll need to know, of course. Um, do we store our secrets, for example, locally on our desktop, or do we store it somewhere more secure? Uh, do we use KMS? What do we use? So we need to know those little details um, as well. Now, as far as uh, number eight, okay, this is cloud operations. There was a good amount of uh, testing on cloud operations, and if you look at the cloud developer exam objectives, you will see that they've got quite a bit around operations. This is going to be for monitoring, uh, error logging, debug, trace, for example, uh, profiler. We'll need to know the whole portfolio of cloud operations. And this can catch people by surprise because typically developers don't like to monitor and manage anything. So this will catch you by surprise if you don't actually review these. So a couple of things I did want to point out. Uh, also know the operation APIs. Now, cloud operation, for those not aware, uh, was formerly known as Stackdriver. So the whole Stackdriver suite is now, of course, operations. Okay, number nine is going to be our CI and CD services. Basically, we need to know how to deploy a pipeline. Where is the repository? Do we use, do we use GitHub or can we store it? on Google Cloud, for example, on basically um, Google Cloud repository. So uh, source repositories, I should say. Now, we also need to know what Cloud Build does, how it works. Uh, we'll need to connect up a pipeline. Uh, another thing to contain a registry. Why do we want to use it? Areas like that. OK. Now, we'll need to know the steps, uh, basically, uh, as well. Also, too, you're expected to know the difference between CI and CD. Um, what is continuous de delivery and deployment as well? Know the difference, right? Automation is really the key there. Lastly, uh, another thing, too, that, you know, comes up that if you're new to Google Cloud, uh, may not be something you're familiar with, but if you're using Terraform, it's really similar, of course. But that will be Deployment Manager. So Deployment Manager allows us, as a developer or an engineer, who, you know, engineers use this quite a bit as well to deploy resources, basically allows us to deploy a templated approach to um, our deployments so that we don't have to manually configure things over 10 times. We get things right. It also allows us to, to eliminate errors and manual issues. So there's templates that we could set up with YAML, for example, and we also want to also be able to debug these scripts as well. So there's some error codes that you'll want to, to look into before the exam. And again, I have uh, more information on that on the blog post. And of course, I cover that in the course. So um, with that said, that's sort of the top 10 things to know for the cloud developer exam. I hope this was a useful video. Let me know any feedback with that said. And do, of course, check out the link below for offers on Tech Commanders. And also, too, please subscribe as well. Thank you. Have a great day.